The typical AK400 is a small CPU cooler that was designed to be affordable while not skimping on the performance. However, given the inflow of affordable air CPU coolers, can this new one hold its own against the established models? The Deepcool AK400 is part of the same CPU cooler series as the AK620 model. However, as the name suggests, this CPU cooler is smaller and cheaper than the AK620. It also uses a single 120mm fan and a simpler design overall. The heatsink used on this CPU cooler has a simple single tower design, with no less than 54 aluminum made cooling fins. These are solid and are also bent on the sides of the heatsink. Bending the cooling fins is not a new thing as plenty other CPU coolers have it. The main purpose of this bending is to create a better structure for the heatsink as each cooling fin will support and be supported by those above and below it. In addition, this design will prevent airflow leakage and keep the air generated by the fan inside the heatsink. Speaking of the fins and their design, this cooler has what Deepcool calls the matrix fin design. From a functionality standpoint, it does nothing, but from a design standpoint, it does improve the overall look of the CPU cooler and makes it stand out from the crowd. The top of the heatsink is covered by a removable plastic plate. This plate has the same design as the plates used on the Deepcool AK620 CPU cooler. It's a good design that is different yet subtle. Fortunately, this plastic cover will completely hide the heat pipe endings which often are not symmetrically machined to look good and thus will break the design of the CPU cooler. Speaking of the heat pipes, the AK400 has only 4 of them, each with an outer diameter of 6mm. Unlike the AK620, the heat pipes of the CPU cooler are going through the base plate of the CPU cooler and not around the back of it. This makes the AK400 a direct touch base style CPU cooler, and this means that the heat pipes are integrated into the surface of the base plate. While it looks good and sounds good on paper, this design is inferior from a performance standpoint when compared to a solid copper base plate. The main reason for this is that a solid base plate is smoother and will transfer the heat faster to the heat pipes, as it's just a single piece of metal. While a direct touch base plate has more imperfections and gaps in its surface and being two different materials, it will transfer the heat at a slower rate. The AK400 has its thermal compound pre-applied on the base plate, which is a common feature on many cheap CPU coolers, however, it is disappointing to see it here, as the AK400, while being cheaper than the AK620, is still not the cheapest cooler on the market to deserve such a feature. Ideally, a tube of thermal compound should have been included, as the pre-applied thermal compound can be easily damaged during shipping. The fan used with the Deepcool AK400 is not the same as the one used on the Deepcool AK620. Even though it looks the same, this fan is called the DF120P and has the model number DF120-2512CM. It uses a regular fluid dynamic bearing system and has a minimum speed of 500 RPM and a maximum speed of 1000 850 rpm. For power, this fan has a single 4-pin connector which will allow you to control the speed of the fan through the motherboard. Unfortunately, the cable is not protected by any kind of sleeving, but the wires are black and thus it will match with the rest of the system. The included fan also has thick rubber pads on all corners of the fan frame. This is good to see as these pads will not only prevent any vibrations from being transmitted inside the system, but they will also prevent the fan from scratching the surface of the heatsink. When we talk accessories and packaging, things are looking good. The cooler and accessories are protected by two soft foam trays, located at the top and the bottom of the packaging. In terms of the accessories, you get everything you need to install the CPU cooler and nothing more. You get a user manual, a backplate, a mounting plate, two fans mounting clips, four studs, two sets of plastic spacers and one orange plastic spacer set. The installation is simple and the included user manual is easy to follow. We start with the backplate which goes at the back of the motherboard socket. At the front you place the required plastic spacers over the inserts of the backplate. Afterwards you get the mounting plate and place it over the plastic spacers. You secure it with the metal studs which must be threaded into the backplate inserts. Finally you apply the thermal compound on the CPU surface and place the cooler on the CPU. You align the spread loaded screws of the CPU cooler with the threads of the mounting plate and tighten them little by little. You finally attach the fan on the heatsink and connect it to the desired fan header on the motherboard. When we talk about clearance, things are alright for the most part. For the graphics card clearance, you get approximately 35mm of space between the side of the CPU cooler and the backplate of the graphics card. However, when we talk about the RAM clearance, things are looking a bit better, as the fan of the cooler barely reaches the RAM modules but does not interfere with them. 
Before we move into the testing segment of this review, you will get to hear the noise of the CPU cooler. I am doing this because while a decibel value is useful for comparison, it does not consider additional noise sources, such as the fan bearing or the vibrations of the fan. With a single 120mm fan running at a maximum speed of 1850 rpm, the Deepcool AK400 reached a maximum noise output of 40 dB with the measuring device placed at a standard distance of 10 cm away from the CPU cooler. The testing of all CPU coolers is done with an Intel i9-9900K CPU running at both the factory turbo fuse frequency and overclocked manually to 5 GHz on all cores. The ambient temperature is set at 26 degrees Celsius. The first test uses the Intel Burntest V2 benchmark, a synthetic benchmark that places a load onto the CPU that is similar with what you can get when playing a modern video game. And in this test, the Deepcool AK400 reached a maximum temperature of 62 degrees Celsius. This places the cooler next to the models, such as the Noxia NH-U12S Redux. However, the next test is where each CPU cooler is pushed to its limits, some even beyond that, as this test uses the system stability test of the AIDA64 Extreme software. This benchmark will place an unrealistic high load on the CPU, something which you will never encounter in your daily usage. In fact, the only CPU load that even gets close to this benchmark is heavy video rendering with the CPU as the only rendering unit. And in this test, the Deepcool AK400 reached a maximum temperature of 90 degrees Celsius with the CPU overclocked at 5 GHz and a maximum temperature of 72 degrees Celsius with the CPU running at its factory turbo boost frequency. This places the AK400 next to the Be Quiet Shadow Rock 3. This cooling performance is good, especially for a CPU cooler of this size, however it clearly shows that overclocking your CPU with this CPU cooler is not recommended. The AK400 is an affordable CPU cooler that will handle an Intel 8-core and 16-thread CPU. However, this CPU cooler is not meant to be used with high TDP CPUs and not made to withstand CPU overclocking. Due to its size and single 120 mm fan, this CPU cooler is a great choice for a medium-range gaming system. The mounting system is good and makes this CPU cooler easy to install even for beginners. The only plastic elements used with this mounting system are the spacers. The AK400 has a maximum maximum noise output of 40 dB, which is not that great for a single fan CPU cooler, especially when looking at how the competition CPU coolers are doing. However, due to its cooling performance, we can gloss over the higher than ideal noise output. The Deepcool AK400 is a good budget CPU cooler that looks great and is well made. The build quality is certainly above its price point. There are some shortcomings however, starting with the direct touch base plate which should have been reserved to only the cheapest of the CPU coolers. Also the pre-applied thermal compound is not ideal, as it can be easily damaged during shipping. Outside of those, this CPU cooler is a great choice for a gaming system, however don't expect it to be able to handle an overclocked CPU, it can't, as it's too small and has only a single one. 120mm fan for its active cooling. If you like this review then you might consider subscribing for more and if you want to support me in a direct way then in the description below you will find the links for both the Patreon and the Subscriber Star pages of this channel.